warm welcome to everyone who has tuned in to the first episode of the What's Next podcast. Um, I'm joined with Matty Fenton. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, and I just thought, you know what, I've, I've known Matty for a while now. Um, I've spent time playing football with him, friends, football friends. And as a footballer, you go through numerous things, some of the good, some of the bad. And the main reason why I've started this podcast, business, whatever you want to call it, um, is to try and connect with the younger generation of footballers. Um, I think it's important as footballers and as a community, it's, it's good for us to understand the good side and the bad side of football and how it can have a positive and also negative effect on our mental side. Um, so hopefully the end goal for this business and the podcast is to connect with many younger players as I can, semi-professional, professional, and for the outside outside world of football to try and really understand how tough it can be um, to become a footballer. Because it's, it's a very competitive sport. And yeah, that's 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 really it. So we're going to get started. Um, Let's go. So yeah, Matty. Tell everyone that's watching um, a bit about you, you know, your playing time. Sure. So, uh, yeah, like Nave said, I'm Matty, Matty Fenton, Matthew Fenton, however you want to call me, yeah. Mm. Uh, but me and Nave have been good friends since, what, age of six, something like that, yeah. six, seven, from oh, crew. Wow, um, so, yeah, so started playing when I was about two, three years old. Um, started at Barnton. Um, my dad was a, a coach there, a joint coach with a lad called John Hatfield and they were kind of joint coaches and played bar until I was under eights, which is when I got scouted for crew by Luke Offord's brother, who's now the captain at crew. So yeah. there's a bit of a right. bit of a throwback straight away from Norwich. Yeah. So uh he scouted me, went to crew when I was under eights. And uh yeah, that's kind of where all the learning of playing football, being part of a team, meeting new people like yourself, it's it's hard at the there's a lot of new players that come into the system and they're either like me and you, we play in the same position. So we, they're, hmm. like, they, they're challenging for your place, but then you could also be a partnership and you need to be a, a big partnership. There's lots of different things and ways that you have to kind of adapt to new players. So being at crew for a span of 10 years from under eights to 18s, hmm. I had to go through that a lot. And it, for me, I've always found it quite hard to enter a dressing room or have someone enter my dressing room. I know they need to feel welcome mm. and as kind of a leader that I've wanted to grow up into and a captain, I've had to find ways how I can do that. But it is hard. I think mm. I think everyone can agree it's hard to get along with someone straight away that you don't know. I know they enjoy football, I enjoy football, but yeah. it's easier said than done. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think definitely. yeah, spanning over ten years at crew, um, got my scholarship under sixteens at crew. Um, did two years in the scholarship under Lee Bell, who's now the first team manager at Crew. Um, brilliant experience. Would do it all over again, but I'm sure we'll come onto it. There's downsides and there's yeah. also upsides of having yeah, a scholarship. Um, but yeah, did that. Got injured at the end of that, and then now back from my injury after two, two and a half, three years playing for 1874 Northwich, who were a semi-professional club in the Northern Premier League West. Yeah, yeah, the West. Yeah, the West that's division, the West one, yeah. 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 But yeah, enjoyed it about two and a half years at 74 now. Um, kind of learning my trade within men's football. A um, bit later than probably what I'd want to. I'm sure we'll touch on yeah. them subjects later on. But yeah, enjoy, fully enjoying playing football still, um, even if it's just part time and training twice a week. But yeah, that's uh, kind of me in a, in a nutshell so far. Yeah, it's good because I remember, I do remember when um, you first signed for 74. Cause obviously, I, so I used to play for eighteen seventy four as well. Um, around like two thousand eighteen, you know, I was a little I was bit before. Yeah, there, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So then, obviously, I saw you signed, and I knew you'd you'd always had your injuries, and I don't I don't know if you had surgery. Did you have I had surgery? surgery. Yeah. So it was October twenty twenty, I think it was, or twenty one, mm. one of them. So yeah, NPFL reconstruction, um, really much the same lines as an ACL, um about six to eight months recovery time yeah. um, and I did that by 
basically just dislocated my knee and snapped a, a muscle in it. So it wasn't a pretty one. It was yeah. uh, quite nice. How, how did it happen? Was it training, game? <laughs> if I'm honest, mate, it was, or... it, was, uh, <laughs> it was seven aside. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was seven aside. Um, I, I thought after kind of leaving crew, I wanted to get fit. I wanted to continually, continuously play football. Mm. Um, and sevens was easy to go and do, join a team, oh, yeah. Yeah. play sevens. And it kind of, yeah, it just happened. Um, my leg and someone else's leg collided together, kind of like a knee bash. Yeah. Um, but he was side on my knee and he kind of popped my knee through. Mm. Bit of a nasty one. It wasn't intentional from the lad, to be fair to him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it happens. It's, again, we'll, we'll touch on yeah, it, but there's exactly. downsides with injuries with football. Exactly. And I'm not saying to anyone, don't play seven aside. Oh, mm. Seven aside is brilliant. We were really yeah, talking about exactly, it before exactly. we started this. It, um, is it is really good. It's a good way of keeping the fitness up. It's a good mm. way of continuously playing football mm. in the off season. I wouldn't advise playing it in season. Yeah, but you got to do you if you need to stay fit. If you need to, yeah, exactly. To it always depends on your situation. Exactly. You could be playing. You could not be playing. So exactly, you yeah. need to keep fit and you need to make sure you touch and all that is mm. still up to par. If you I don't know if you take six months off football, you're not going to be as good if you didn't carry on playing over exactly, them six months. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good way of just getting around the pitch. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. different. But, um, so, yeah, that, this is one another factor that I'm trying to trying to showcase on my Instagram account and the posts that I make is about the effects of injuries. And just it, there, is a, there is a load of things in football that can have either a physical or mental effect on you as a player. And it can have like long lasting effects. Obviously, there's injuries, there's rejection. Um, you might be having good games, bad games. And I feel like the main thing that we have to do is, as a football community, and which is why I've started this, is it's just have these one on one conversations and to post things, put things out there for the younger generation to, to read, to watch, and to, to understand that it, it's okay. Like, whatever they're going through, whether it's good or it's bad, it's, it's okay to feel happy, sad, angry. Uh, whatever situation you're in because more often than not there are thousands hundreds of thousands of kids that are going for the exact same thing because we have the same goal we want to be professional footballers just through the academy phase you want to be a professional footballer when you're training you're playing whatever you're doing in any type of football environment is for you to progress yeah and that's that's the point i'm trying to get across is no matter what happens it's all for a reason and like you like me we're all going to be going for the same things and the end goal is always the same and it's, it's just become professional football. Just different paths of yeah. how you get there. It's, some exactly. are quite lucky and know people within the game and that's fair enough. Some people mm. have to put the graft in. I mean, everyone has to put the graft in, but yeah, of course. sometimes you've got to make your connections and climb the ladder that way. So um, there's different paths and it's completely normal for mm. people to go the different paths. So, yeah. yeah. But, um, so obviously touching on your injuries, um, you know, how did you feel, obviously... It happened after after crew. Yeah. So I'm guessing you kind of do you take any time out after crew? You know, yeah. Like, so for like ten years, I, I've kind of always pride not prided myself, but mm. kind of never seen myself as a guy who gets injured quite a lot, which is touch wood. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we'll go back. Yeah, touch yeah. wood. It's uh, probably something that I don't see myself doing. I like mm. to keep fit, go to the gym, do the stretching, all, mm. all that kind of etc. stuff. Um, but they do happen, like you said, um, mm. and sometimes it's just contact yeah. kind of stuff. Um, you'll get injured at the most random points. You'll get injured quite often. Like I said, people have their different paths, but I think it's just it's easy just to feel down when you're mm. injured, um, not bounce back as hard. Think, why has it happened to me? Yeah. Um, I think you've just got to clear them thoughts and get straight back on it. Mm. Um, get fit, do what you can, upper body, if it's a leg injury, if it's, I mean, you barely get upper body injuries yeah, in football, but yeah, right. yeah, you just need yeah. to get, you just need to bounce back as, I say as quickly, you can only bounce back as quick as mm. what the specialists are telling you. So I'm guessing you, can do. you receive some type, receive some type of help yeah. during the process. Yeah, or... so I wasn't at crew, so I had to go through the PFA yeah. um, that were brilliant. They, they kind of took me in, did my scans, did my operation. Um, and then I reconnected with a lad called Tom Lamb, mm. who is actually from Norwich, yeah. um, but he was a physio at crew at the time um, and kind of got my physiotherapy through him. Obviously, it was paid for by the PFA again, mm. um, but the PFA were brilliant. They're on the end of a phone call, 
um, and they're, they're, they're easy to talk to. Yeah. Was, um, it, was it you? Con did you contact them? Yeah. Sort of so I kind of rang up them. Um, I think when I don't know if everyone gets a card. I'm not too sure. But mm. when you're at, when you get a scholarship, you get a PFA card, and yeah. you, you've got a number on the back of it. Um, you kind of ring up there and tell them your number. It's not it's not anything secret. You can ring yeah. them up and speak to them any way you oh, I'd imagine. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I told them my number, etc., and kind of told them my situation, what routes I can go down, and they kind of just dealt with it. It wasn't yeah. anything my end, quite like hands on, yeah. going on your computer, ringing them up every time. They just drop you an email, give you a ring back, and they they were really and just like really sort helpful. Of organize it already, yeah, already. I know, I know, everyone's not in that kind of situation, yeah, and completely understand that people might not have that route to go down but it is best to seek specialist advice when it comes to injuries because we're, we're not specialists yeah. unless you unless you are <laughs> exactly, um, take exactly. your own advice but um yeah go and seek yeah it's the, only, the it's the only way to get back as quick as you can like you said so yeah but i think going back to the point kind of with the negative feelings they are going to happen that mm. you're not going to play for six months i mean I've just recently got away with an ACL tear yeah. from Boxing Day, and it feels amazing to actually get away and be back playing. Yeah. Um, but there are going to be negative feelings. You've got to turn them into positives and use yeah. that as motivation to come back stronger, get in the gym. I mean, I did mine, and I put on a shitload of weight. <laughs> I put on a lot of weight. Um, but, yeah, it's the same cliche phrase. Look, look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Look at yourself in the mirror, and if you do do that, is that what you want to be doing? Or... If, you want to be back playing football go and do it yeah. just go and no one's stopping you it's you and your mindset that is only going to stop you and yeah, yeah. Ex exactly exactly but i mean touching on that I, I can remember when i had my injury when i was at crew um mine was i just had i was good yeah yeah everyone everyone i was good it is it's obviously just it's just growing pains in your knees and like just your your legs and like i don't know if it's like the bone or the muscle, one of them grows quicker than the other. See why I didn't have him. One of them grows quicker than the other, and it just causes like severe pain. You can get like like these bumps in your knees, and like they just stay there forever. Uh, you can get them shaved off. I only recently found like you can actually get them that shaved. Like so I just have the bump, and you can get them, like shaved yeah. off. Yeah, and I, I didn't know, but um, so I remember when I was, like, I think I was like under fourteen or fifteen at the time, and then I actually got it, and I, I started growing, growing. Yeah. And then I just started to feel off, like my touch was off. Uh, when I had passing, running, I just felt, I just felt horrible. I felt just, so dangly, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I, I swear, I spent, I think it was like a full season just in the physio room because I, I literally couldn't play. Like, I can't I remember that season. Yeah. It was like 14, That's 15, I mean, yeah, 20, yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't play whatsoever. I couldn't, I couldn't put any pressure on it. I couldn't run. I couldn't kick the ball because like, my legs were just growing and I, I couldn't get any power. I couldn't get anything. And I just spent like the four seasons in the physio room. I'd just go on the bike. I go in early, go on the bike, do some work, get some stretches done, maybe go on the cross trainer, and then I just go home, and then that was it. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. If, during that time, I, I when I look back on it now, I could honestly, I could honestly say that it was probably a time where I felt the most alone. Like it, it was a weird feeling because I'm thinking about it now, and I was like, oh no, but I was like, you know, I'm in crew, I'm, you know, I'm playing with the lads. Yeah. And, and like the difference was before my injury playing with you guys yeah. every week, training, coming in, laughing, joking. Then we'd have, um, was it the half days you come in after, uh, half, yeah, half day yeah. after school you and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, you have the school too, yeah. and kind of come in for the days and yeah, stuff like and, that. Yeah, and then from going, from transitioning to that, to then just being in the physio room, like, oh, I'd, it, it was a weird feeling. And there was one, there was one moment when, I don't know if you, you probably remember, but you guys came in. I, this will stick with me forever. <laughs> like, it will honestly stick with me forever because you guys came in to like warm up uh, just do some stretches or something. I was just sat on the bike. Like, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. And then uh, the physio came. I don't know who it was. He was like, oh, yeah, you can, you know, you can go stretch them. I ain't seen you guys for like, probably, I don't know, probably say like half, just over half the season. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, yeah, just go stretch them. Like, blah, blah. And I've gone over, I was going to stretch, and like, I just felt so disconnected. From like, like the group. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just used to just seeing you guys week in, week out training now. And I just sat there, and I just, I can just literally picture myself just sat down, and I was just stretching. I'm just like, Oh, it's like I just felt like a like a new guy. Yeah, like, yeah. And that moment just sticks to me. And I don't know if there's players who have been in that environment or that scenario where you've been you've been stuck you've been stuck in the physio room for however long with an injury and coming back. I don't know how if you maybe might have felt like that when it's more of a 
you just feel disconnected from football because instead of like you said, you put on a bit of weight yeah. and you feel like, oh, do, do I really want to do this? Like, it, I mean, I've I just want to work on? come back from an injury mm. and I thought I'd done my ACL, mm. but I didn't. Mm. But I was still out for two months, and the fact that I wasn't training with the lads, I was going, I was kind of sitting, sitting around because you know, it's semi, basically it's basically yeah, semi pro football. Yeah, you don't have the facilities to just go in the gym out, and yeah. do that kind of stuff. So mm. it was literally till I was training in my own clothes and everyone else is training and I'm kind of just there like this is just boring yeah this is so boring just sat here kind of just doing nothing my my teammates probably need me to yeah. train and they need me to play kind of the situation that, it's kind of like your comeback arc yeah. as well like you already, you've obviously had your injury you've come back you've finally managed to get a bit of a flow going and then all of a sudden yeah another, it's, the same, it's the same knee as well which is mm. kind of sent me into a bit of shock at the time yeah. Um, it was a bit of a nervy wait. I only found the results out about four weeks ago. Mm. Um, but as soon as I found them, it was, it was brilliant. It was yeah, like, just like full steam yeah. ahead, go back, get fit again. Exactly. Um, and I've yeah, just started playing. But it, it is normal to feel disconnected. I think mm. I think being a pro and being around the building 24-7, I think it would probably, probably be easier. I've never done it. Yeah. But the fact that you're in the building... 24 7 you can have lunch with your teammates you yeah. have that way of connecting but i mean when you did it and when i've just been through it now when you're only seeing each other maybe twice a week for yeah. training and you've got games on a saturday it's quite hard to integrate yourself into that because they've they're doing their thing and obviously you you're doing your own rehab yeah. thing and it's, it feels disjointed um but yeah i think it's a normal feeling to feel like that and if you are feeling like that just have a chat with the skipper. Yeah. Have a chat with the skipper. The skipper that's what the skipper's there for. Yeah. To listen to players if you're feeling left out. Um, just have a chat with the skipper. Yeah. And just say, well, anyone, I'm just, yeah. yeah. Any, any yeah, yeah, anyone. But if you've got no one, yeah. just have a word Marking, with the skipper and just yeah. say, this is how I'm feeling, kind of about my situation, how I'm feeling, being disjointed for the lads. And I promise you that that's what the skipper's there to do. It's yeah. his job to make everyone feel well and it'll make you feel better. And when you come back, you you've got that person yeah. that, that has made you feel like that so yeah and that's actually touching on on like people to make you feel you know like feel like you're heard and you know someone you can easily like confide in stuff like another fact that i've been i've been kind of think i've been thinking of um in terms of when i would think about my career so far i was just nowhere near where like i want it to be and like just the importance of family um obviously like i know your dad yeah. your dad knows my dad like we know each other and it's like, I feel like even in terms of making relationships in football, when you're at that young age, you know, you've got your mates, you, you might even have some, a little rivalry. Say if we were rivals, defender versus defender, I feel like that can also be portrayed onto the parents. Maybe the parents won't talk. Yeah. Um, I, I remember I've, I had a couple of feuds with some players and it, it, I it's, guess. it's good. <laughs> I guess, yeah. But yeah. yeah, exactly. Like it, it, it's good. Like it, that's another thing as well. Like I like about, just football in general and how it like just builds your character and builds you as a person and the certain environments and scenarios that you face and that you find yourself in it's it's for you to it, it's just character building and again touched on the importance of family i feel like for me because obviously you know my dad i feel like if i didn't have my dad i i don't know where right, i'd where yeah. i'd be in in terms of football like someone that takes me to games takes me to train and like training out in the fields randomly like uh, when it's raining when it's sunny when it's snowing like I, I can and again I can imagine how obviously your dad or anyone else in your family like is there anyone else in your family who's like that uh, sort of inspiration yeah so it's my dad my mom and my granddad which is my dad's dad yeah. um, but it's cliche to say that you wouldn't be here without family mm. it's cliche to say that but you, you, you <laughs> yeah, wouldn't be here yeah, yeah, when you're young yeah. they, they take you over there they dedicate your time mm. their time sorry yeah. um, to take you to your training sessions and all that and I think when you grow older and you start playing men's football and you start driving and they don't have to take you and you've always got to show that appreciation back mm. by even just going over to them at the end of the game and saying thanks for coming yeah um it's quite an easy thing to do you don't have to go straight i know sometimes you lose a game and it's upsetting sometimes you win you want to be down the tunnel you're in the yeah, change room so celebrating right. and yeah. and stuff but it's such an easy thing to do by just going over and giving them a hug and saying yeah. thanks for coming and stuff like yeah. it's appreciation that they've not done anything that day mm. for you but at least they've come so they're still showing their support and it means so much to see family at the side yeah exactly yeah. obviously when you go to pro you see them all waving but that is the 
the points of appreciation yeah, yeah, of that, that they do. It's such an easy thing to do, and I think a lot of players miss it and they don't have that appreciation or just I don't, I don't know it's, it's some people don't think in the moment some people think about other things you don't have to do it it's just something that i've always kind of done mm. to, to do it unless i'm getting paid a million quid <laughs> buy my house or something like that. <laughs> but yeah um yeah it's a lot of, they do a lot they put a lot of time into it and i would not be anywhere near where i am if they said no nah, fuck it off mm. concentrate on your books because i'm not that type of lad i wouldn't have i wouldn't have concentrated on my books but yeah yeah, yeah. Good. Right, wait one second. Bro, I'm not rethinking. I've, I didn't press record. <laughs> I did. Okay. You did. <laughs> I'm going to get that at the start. <laughs> I know, I know. Oh, so that, oh, Half an hour in, and we're like, I know. oh, I've got dry mouth here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I actually thought I didn't. Yeah, and actually, speaking of family and your dad, I, I remember, again, I don't know, I feel like in football, you just have the you have these moments where like you remember good things, you remember bad things, and it just sticks with you. Cause I can remember, there's just in my career so far, like I just remember certain moments. I, I guarantee you probably just remember little bits. Yeah. yeah. And one thing I remember is when I, th- I think it was I think we played Everton. It was sunny, and I remember you scored a header, and I, I, you might not remember, but I don't know what I just remember. And I remember you after you scored that you've gone up bang off a corner. Yeah. You scored his head and you ran to your dad. You ran point yeah. to your dad because you thought. And I was like, well, everyone's like, 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 why, why, why you ran to your dad? It's all because we were practicing heading like on the weekend or whatever, like before the game. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair. That's, I actually don't remember. <laughs> you know, that, that's, that's, it that's probably what I mean. should do. It's probably yeah, something that bro, I should remember. But it, it's things that I, I don't know. I don't know why. I, I, just that connection you have with like footballs and players. Like we got on so much, and there's players that I know that. I've got on with so well. I'm sure you have as well. That you just remember certain moments, like even if it's good or bad, you you just remember it. And, mm-hmm. and again, that's I don't know. That's I feel like like the beauty of football, where it doesn't really matter what's going on. You could be having the worst day, but then as soon as you just sevens, for example, you could be having the worst day and you just turn up to sevens. Yeah. Or you turn up to a game, or you score go to a goal, yeah. or you do a nice pass. Yeah. It's gonna make it's, you feel better. Exactly. If you enjoy football. Yeah. I think it's important to touch on that you will have good relationships with players. Mm-hmm. But you'll also have bad ones. Mm. There's a lot of instances where you won't get along with someone. You don't like their personality, mm. um, especially when you grow older. Maybe not for the younger kids, but the forefront of your mind. You've got to remember that you're part of a team and yeah. that you're working towards one goal. So you have to put that behind you. Mm. You have to get along. With, you don't have to get along with them, but you mm. have to at least see mutual ground. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, relationships work positively positively and negatively mm. um that's where your professionalism comes out and you've got to put your, your team to the forefront and yeah. not your personal kind of yeah yeah your goals issues and exactly, stuff like that yeah exactly that's um yeah that's another thing i think um in terms of like building relationships of with teammates or people in general i feel like even for myself i don't know i feel like it's easier for me to build a relationship with someone who plays football than, than someone who doesn't yeah and i don't know if it's that if it's just because you've just been head on full force football 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 since you were like the age of two three four whatever and again that's another thing i don't know if it will it will have some sort of like mental effect some negative effect in terms of who you trust how will you then respond to making new friends obviously you're going into a new team how will you respond with making friends will you be able to get along with a new squad obviously when you sign for 74 it might be a good bunch a good bunch of lads but will they Will they be able to like integrate you into Except the system? You, yeah. yeah. And yeah. will you be able to trust them? Yeah, you, or you're just thinking, even with managers. Yeah. I think mean, it's touching back on the start. It's like yeah. it is hard to be welcomed into a new training room or welcome someone new because you kind of are a strange a stranger to some people and it's mm. it's hard to befriend a stranger yeah. straight away. Yeah, definitely. kind of thing. Um but I think your feet do the talking mm. and kind of your mindset together. If you show the right mindset and you have the off day. That it is what it is. You're going to have your off days, but as long as you're giving 100, percent you'll always gain the respect of your players on the pitch, the manager, and you'll keep getting given chances. Um, and I think that's the only way that I kind of got myself into the dressing room where I am now, kind of mm. where I was at Crew. I mean, I've only been at two clubs, mm. um, Crew in '74. Um, so it's the only thing I know is by putting your head down and giving 100. Yeah. percent into everything and you gain the respect of your peers and your managers um and if that doesn't work it's probably their loss really and mm. if, you, if you've got a player that's going to give 100 percent every week um 
you can't ask for much more yeah than, than that yeah yeah definitely so touching on obviously we've gone we've gone through a lot we've gone from start to finish we're not, even, <coughs> not even finished yet because you ain't finished so <laughs> like, you're not you're still going but in terms of is there any things that you look back on now like in terms of your career any any moments where you thought you know i wish maybe maybe i might have done this differently or maybe if i if i didn't do this maybe this might have happened or is there anything that you you probably thought you probably sat and thought about after it's happened yeah so i don't like having regrets and i don't Mm. think it is a regret Mm. it's something i probably wish i knew before before kind of starting a nine to five (laughs) because it's fucking hard (laughs) um doing a nine to five job um so i think it's probably just being a scholar and kind of having the privilege of going to 40 at nine o'clock in the morning Mm. and some days you'd finish at three some days you would finish at four or four maybe even five o'clock mm. depending on how belly felt on the day <laughs> um but it's really not hard to say if you finish at one two i know a lot of footballers go in train in the morning they might have a gym session or whatever i don't mean i've never been a pro but yeah it's quite hard to eat. i know but what i'm trying to get is if footballers mm. can finish before five o'clock yeah don't yeah put that extra bit of graft in because you have to do it on the outside world you have to go to your job and work a nine to five or some in some cases you might have to work a there are six till four yeah, it might be longer hours shift, shift, yeah. that two hours of doing something that you love could change your life forever mm. it could easily change your life you again it comes back to that 100 percent. yeah i was given 100 percent into training but was i given 100 percent to everything i've yeah. got knowing what i know now mm. how hard a nine to five job is something that I enjoy, I enjoy doing yeah. my job, don't get me wrong, mm. but it's not something that I ever saw myself yeah, doing. It wasn't something yeah, that yeah. I wanted to do when I was a young kid. Mm. So just put that a little bit extra in than what your peers are doing. Don't mm. think it's dead easy, but at the time, Fortnite was a massive game when I was mm. a scholarship. I don't know, we're going off the topic. What we no, 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 Fortnite no, was a no, massive yeah. game and I had a lot of friends that would say, oh, we've got three o'clock finish today, let's go home and we play Fortnite till 10 o'clock. Mm. It's really easy to train. Do really well at training, mm. go home and then just sit on your ass for yeah. seven hours. It's like there's so much time there. Even if you just take two hours and just say, look, I'll, I'll be home in like two hours. Yeah. Don't tell your friends what you're doing because everyone's in competition. But just say, I'll be home in two hours. I've got something to do. Stay behind. Mm. Just stay behind for two hours. It might be you coaching the kids, right? Mm. And it will get your coaching abilities, get your communication skills up. It might be that you go in the gym it's your strength up yeah. might be that you just go to a board and hit it left foot right foot for half an hour mm. and then practice some longer passing but everything that you can do with that extra hour or two hours doing the nine to five job but in something that you love is going to be yeah, something like something that i just yeah. wish I, I knew how hard a nine to five job mm. was before i entered the scholarship yeah because as soon as you've got that you're in the club then you, you're training every day you've got to put every last bit into it and yeah. i do believe i did that but there are extras that i think people do miss out on and it's a trick that people miss yeah if you do that you're you're gonna get you're gonna you get, get a pro yeah, yeah, you're gonna get yeah, a pro some exactly. if you don't get a pro at that club they'll put a good fucking reference in yeah. to another club that this kid is is yeah. a hard-working lad and it's easy to say now after probably not doing it as much as what i could i did start my coaching badges a bit late and mm. stuff like that but it's probably easier to say now, but it's easier to tell people this yeah. now, knowing what I know now. Yeah, what you've been yeah. through. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not a regret. It's something that I wish you I knew, wish you knew more. before. Yes. Yeah, I like. I actually like the way you worded that. Yeah, yeah. It was hard like, to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, know, I like the way yeah. you worded it because it's not a regret. It's something that I wish I knew before. Yeah, yeah. That is exact, that's how I felt um, when I when I spent time at United when I was younger. Like, they were, I went through a phase where. I can't. I don't know which age group it was, but I was I was doing really well. I was doing really well, training well, playing games well, and then we had like obviously the meetings like Nathan, that you're doing really well. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, just keep it going. Um, and then I kind of I just slacked off a bit. And at this mo at that time when I was I think it was like nine, mm-hmm. nine, ten or whatever, and you don't you don't realize you don't yeah. sit, you, when you're in that moment you don't think ah oh, I just think I'm just playing for a, a, a team I support like yeah. oh it's good I've got friends you know. I've, have sleepovers with friends or we go on trips away somewhere as a team you start cruising a little bit yeah yeah, exactly and you just don't realize and 
I know my dad would tell me now again, and it got to a point where I ended up having another meeting, and like Nathan, like, like what's going on? Like you, you're slacking. Like you, you need to pick it up unless we'll have no choice. But when the next season comes, you, you won't, we won't, we won't carry like pick you on. Um, and I ended up going to America uh, for Christmas, and I just spent time training. Mm-hmm. Like, like again, like you said, just training, training, and you don't realize, but it. It all it all adds up. Like I know about the one percent, and you, you, it all adds up. And before you know it, then you go back into training. You've got instead of one percent, you've got an extra ten yeah. percent in training, yeah. an extra fifteen percent, and just stuff like that. And obviously, unfortunately, like I, it didn't it didn't end well. But then again, it was like not a regret. It's something that I wish I knew before. So now you know. Yeah. What now I know. Yeah. Now but I you know, you don't know yeah. like if you didn't do that extra mm. bit. Would you be where you are now? Yeah. Would you be as good of a player as where you are now? Yeah. Kind of thing. So it goes left or right. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. It might not have worked in that route, mm. but it, it's also still kind might of work in that. another yeah. route. Yeah. It, if you didn't do that, would you be as good in, in men's football? You, mm. you know what I mean? Like it, it might not always work for the route that you want to go down. I know mm. you play for United, you support mm. United, obviously. Yeah. You, want, you want to go and play like, I don't know, Rashford's doing <laughs> yeah. now for United, but that is one in a million. Yeah, there's exactly. there's there's a million people. Yeah, what, way over a million, but mm. there's a million people at Sport United. Yeah, Rashford's probably the only one that's gone exactly from and, to top. Yeah, and, and again, again, that's that's another another point in terms of just how how tough how tough and how hard it can be in terms of how competitive football is, just the industry and the sport itself, with how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of kids that go for an academy in one year, and just the likes of to get a scholarship, like even even that is an achievement in itself because you're handpicked out of the players that have been there, that have been yeah. released, that they've probably looked at and said, oh no, we'll, we'll leave them more. And they're looking at other clubs to try to this. So even that in itself is a great it's a great achievement, but that's what I'm trying to emphasize and certain factors that come into it and for outside viewers of, of football that don't really understand how tough it can be, just giving little insiders like why well, I'm glad you're here, like you know, just to give your your view on how things were and how your experience was to show that it's not as easy just kicking the ball. No. <laughs> it's no. not it's no. not just kicking the ball because yeah, and everyone says it but it, you know, if, if it was that easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. And people can do it, but to do it at the level that even to get a scholarship that you were, it is it's a it's a it's a minor percentage. It's a small percentage to even get that chance. But um but yeah that again that Academies are like, oh. are like a conveyor belt. Mm. They bring in a lot of players, they distribute a lot of players. Even if you don't get the scholar, you can say you've been to an academy and you can move yeah, on. Yeah, you get you get a little uh, it, a little pedestal. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's hard. It, there's no question about it. It takes a lot of work and it comes from family. So you've got to have that mm. support and background for a start. And not everyone has that. Mm. Unfortunately, not everyone has that. If there's not roots around it, what's your next best option to an academy that's kind of close to home that you can get to? Is what I'd kind of be thinking. I had the support, so it was not easy, but yeah. I could get to crew. I could yeah. get half an hour up the road in the car yeah. when I'm eight years old, yeah. all the way until I'm seventeen and I start driving. Mm. Um, but I think what kept me going through the age groups was learning something that I was good at and making sure I was the best at what I needed to be good at. So, kind of defending. Mm. passing of the ball in different kind of ranges um listening to the coaches is massive in an academy yeah if they if, if you're really good at something with your right foot can you be just as good if not slightly Best just better, yeah, yeah maybe yeah. slightly better slightly yeah. slightly less better yeah. on your weaker foot and if they tell you to use your weak foot there was, there was one game i, I want to say it was wolves mm. on the 14s 15s and i played left center half and they told me to use my left foot mm. for the whole game. Yeah. For the whole game. So I had to take everything on the left foot yeah. and I had to pass everything on the left foot. And I remember it was 15, it would have been Morris. I think it would have been Alex Morris. And I used my right foot once and mm. he brought me back to the right foot point. Mm. And he told me, why did you use your right foot there? I, I don't know if I can remember what I said back. It was yeah. probably something like, I didn't think I could use my left. Mm. They showed me the video back. He's like, you could have done this, you could have done that. But it's the minor details. But he did say to me, I noticed you were using your left foot for the game. Yeah. And it's just, listen, whatever the coaches say, it comes back to that injury. 
they are the specialists. Yeah. So don't think that you know more yeah, you know than a coach, mm. even at semi-pro level. Mm. That coach is trying to get a squad together that's his squad that plays the way he wants to play the gels together. to get yeah. three points Saturday after Saturday. Yeah. So you've got to listen to them. You have to. If that's how they want you to play, that's how you need to play. But it means you have to be an all-round consistent player for you to get picked. So... Mm. Yeah, listening is an important thing in the academy because it is an incredible belt. And if you're not going to do it, the next person is going to mm. do it. And if they don't do it, the next person is going to do it. it it's a conveyor belt of players. That's what academies yeah, are, essentially. Yeah, so listen, give it yeah. give it your best 110% is what I can say going through an academy. Yeah, so going through, obviously you mentioned when you were playing, you are playing football, you are a scholar, and then the transition of then going from football, 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 injury, working your way back, football and then now nine to five what so that in terms of that transition how was that how has that been from from, from um, the start of realizing oh i actually might have to start working do, do work yeah. yeah i i actually enjoy my job mm. it, it's not like i said it's not something that i grew up wanting to do yeah but you have to do it mm. <laughs> you have to do it if you want some sort of life um so i'm actually moving out next month which is mm. Pretty, hey, uh, pretty <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've actually got a flat that I'm moving out to next month, but that yeah. only comes from working. Mm. Um, I just use the same mindset, you know. Mm. I'm not the best, I'm not, it's in IT, mm. so not. I think I got like a D in computer science, so mm. like I don't, my knowledge of computers and it's in sales, so I've not trained to do it. I obviously have now, I did an apprenticeship yeah. and courses, but going into it, it was. 110 percent effort and listen to the people that are trying to teach me yeah that's how you learn stuff so they're, they're going to teach you something all right i'm going to put 100 percent effort into it so it, it's hard it's, you, it's some people are not going to do it some yeah, people don't want to go into a nine to five and they want to do what they want to do but i've kind of just i got myself in there through my dad and, and stuff like that um but football on the side has been massive it has been huge because even though it's semi-pro, it's something to look forward to in the week. Mm. It's something on a Tuesday night, on a Thursday night, I finish work on a Friday night and then I'm, my head's on football. Saturdays I've got a game and then I can enjoy my Saturday night. I can go out for a few beers. Mm. But football has been a massive kind of driving factor of getting me through the week because nine to five is a slog. Mm. But as long as you've got something to look forward to, like training and playing games, it, it can yeah, it can you, pull you your, through. Yeah. Your day doesn't end there, sort of thing. So yeah. you, you finish your work and then you start, all right, mindset football now. And yeah, it's, it's, and it, it's it comes back to that point of doing that a little bit more. I know a lot of my colleagues at work will go home and do nothing, which is absolutely fine if that's what they want to do and work a nine-to-five, go home, make the tea. Yeah. I know people in different circumstances and got kids. I completely understand, but I can't. Do that right now mm. like i can't just come home and just sit sit and watch mm. and play and it's so easy it's so easy to do yeah it's so easy to do. like last night we didn't have training it would have been so easy just to sit there and have a night off and mm. play my games and i don't know go to the pub with my mate yeah. it's so easy but i went in the gym because i'm kind of used to doing a tuesday thursday saturday yeah and it's disappointing that we didn't have training because i couldn't see my other group of mates but it comes to that kind of point of Given that you got to give a little that bit more, so yeah, got to give that little bit more. Yeah. It's, it's it's easy to, to slack. Yeah, if you've been given the day off, you go ah oh, day off. It's yeah. Like, yeah, don't worry, I'm just gonna kick back. So. Yeah, I've got I've got I've got the message. It, yeah. it, it literally says yeah seventy four. It's Matt Boy, so we won't mind me sharing. Yeah. Uh, struggling for anything tomorrow. Make sure you do your own thing, and then we're at normal time after seven at Moss Farm on, on Thursday. Mm. So it's that's the gaffer. Although he's a player manager and. He's not a fish, he's a temporary manager. Mm-hmm. That is my gap for telling me to do something on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Some players will say, Oh, I've got Tuesday off. Yeah, you know, we we don't have to know. We mm-hmm. don't have to put anything in there. Do it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just do it for, even if no one knows, but I could live on my own and I could just do some sit ups in my you know, if I moved yeah. to my flat or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. No one can know, but I know. Yeah. I know that it's I've done yourself, it. Man, yeah. So if if there's a centre half at seventy four that's gonna come in on Tuesday that didn't do it. Yeah, you're gonna show him. Yeah, show, yeah, show him that should do it. Yeah. yeah, so <laughs> Tell him, show him why he should be doing this. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. There's always competition in football. Yeah. Always. So you've yeah. got to make sure 
you're the best that you can possibly be and mm. that's easier said than done you've got to put that consistent 100%. graft into it which is what's what makes football so hard but kind of going off the topic a little bit yeah but, yeah no, no definitely no, it's, it's always on topic because um again that's that's another point i'm just gonna get across of how hard it is and the fact is the dedication um the mindset sacrifices the certain things that even if you aren't a professional yet it's the things that you have to do to become a professional yeah and any young players or what they end up clicking on this and watching this video um it it's those moments in your career that try and define they define who you are so like you were talking about with you know you got to be doing that one percent that is the type of player you are that's that's what you that's how you see life now in terms of when you're working whether it's you're going to the gym if you're even if you're playing on a game or you do it, that's just your that's your mindset yeah. that's your way of thinking i'm going to go 100 percent no matter what even if i don't know it with your it i'm going to make sure that i'm going to be the best at it no matter what happens someone tries to come in take, take my place now nah, i'm too good might not have worked mm. it, it, i started my apprenticeship in computer sales and i'd give it 100 percent. and if they'd said my knowledge wasn't good enough and dropped me at the end of that fine mm. fine at least i know again comes back to me knowing yeah. that i give that 100 percent and look, I got the job. Mm. So it's easy It's easy to look back now and say, I give 100% and got the job. But yeah. if I didn't put 100% in, I put 80, 70, 90, 90 92%. Mm. It's always in the back of your head, always in the back of your head. Could you what? just give mm. that extra 8, 10, 15% more yeah. at the time? And again, it's easier said than done, but just do it. Yeah, just yeah, put 100% into everything. So yeah, it's mm. always how I've grown up. It comes from my dad and my mum, to be fair. Yeah. Mum doesn't have to work but she does because yeah. she, she wants to put 100 percent into everything dad has always put 100 percent into his job and developed through kind of what he's doing his size yeah. so it it's comes the mindset from the parents, of yeah. the family mindset yeah. of the family that's right that's again just about the importance of family that i feel like it's it's a, it's a factor that i've i've kind of i kind of plucked out the air kind of i didn't i didn't really think it was a, a factor until i started thinking about well obviously you have your dad's parents that we've played like kids that we, we've played with where Maybe you might not see, you might have not seen their parents, or mm -hmm. you might not have spoken to them, or they just drop them off and then go home. Go home, yeah. Uh, yeah. They drop them off at the game, they go home, or they end up going. The kids will end up going with the other kids, and it's just stuff like that. Like, I feel like it, it can define the type of player you are. Whether whether you're going to carry on because you could get released, and that's, oh, look, you, know. <laughs> but you could you, like you could get released, and comp in comparison for a kid who has that family support behind them, where the dad would be like, all right, what's next sort of thing? Like, yeah. You know, all right, you've been released. It doesn't matter what's next. Or in, whether the kid who doesn't have the, the family support, he just, he's been released. It's like, oh, you know, it's all right. Well, you tried. And yeah. that could, that's just the end of their career like that. So. But we don't, obviously, we don't know who the viewers are going to be. But yeah. if there are any dads in there, I would mm. definitely, definitely advise you to stay around at your son's training and be there as a support. Mm. Make sure you're there because... I don't know if it's easy to go and do the shopping for two hours. I don't, it's probably harder <laughs> than just sitting at the side of a football pitch and watching. Mm. Um, it gives you so much confidence as a player mm. to play in front of your, your dad yeah. and your mum, but especially your dad. Yeah. Especially, yeah if, especially if he enjoys football and you're doing well and you're playing well and you know you're playing well. Yeah. And they're there watching. They're both there. Mm. There's no, there's nothing worse because I remember, I remember the feelings like, if my dad will come to a game and I know I've done bad. Yeah. I know I've had a bad game. I'm just thinking, oh my, I can't get in this car. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. get, and if I do get in the car, I'm just silent. I just sit like, yeah. waiting for him to say, uh, say, yeah, say, just something. say something. Yeah. yeah. But then there's times when you're having a good game and or even just when you, I, I still do it now. I don't know if, if, uh, if your dad ever gets to come to any of your games now. Yeah, again. he comes. And, and yeah. yeah, and you just, you just like, you just quit. Oh, he's right. yeah, yeah. Just, a, just, just a small one, like small yeah. one. Yeah, it's just, that little points of appreciation yeah. come back to for family. Yeah, just kind of making sure they're there and you no, know, just going over to them, giving them a hug. But coming back to your point about mm. being a dad and kind of if your son plays poorly, it's quite easy mm. to sh not shout as such, yeah. but point out the things that he done poorly. It's hard to go and tell him to go again. Yeah rather than keep putting him down because that is going to put a player down mm. it is i don't know if we get on to the parents <laughs> yeah, no. um, players especially young players always need support mm. and leave it to the specialists again yeah coaches whoever else 
to do the tactical mm, kind of yeah. if you play a pass out play so what yeah, so yeah what? exactly <laughs> yeah so nah, what? if you score an own goal so what yeah go back and look at it ask your coaches mm. what could i have done differently what how do i make this pass work rather than it going out of play mm. how do i as defenders how do we take this out of defense and mm. find a pass and then progress further forward up the pitch yeah ask your coaches ask your dad they mm. most likely not going to give you a, yeah the, the, the right, a, the right answer, yeah. he might give you he yeah, might he give you the right answer. he could do yeah, but actually, they're I probably a different. My, my dad's not bad at advice, <laughs> but yeah, so. the, the coaches are one hundred percent knowing. Again, it comes back to the coaches building the team mm. that they want a, a a club building players that they want. Yeah, the specific type of. So way if you want to, yeah, if yeah. you want to get into that club, your dad's not going to know how you get into that club. Mm. He might think he does, mm. but the coaches know yeah. how you're going to get into that club yeah to the professional level yeah yeah Yeah, definitely mate oh well i think i think that's it i think i think that's all we have um i've got my nice little notebook here (laughs) my first my first podcast making sure that don't miss anything yeah I I, i feel like to be fair for the first one i feel like we've covered a lot we were nervous before. I don't yeah, know why we were both no, nervous, no. but we kind of just flow. Me and they flow. Like yeah, we know it's good for the time, so it's not it's bad. Just the conversation, but that's why really. I like this because, and I'm hoping I can, it will kick on and I can get more players involved and stuff. And because like you, you for example, you're a prime example of players that have gone through the academy system. They've had injuries, they've had mishaps. They've then worked back up. Mm-hmm. And, then they've transitioned to different things you're working but then you're also playing football and it's just like it's just the overall view of not the one percent or nine percent of professional footballers that are playing up there and yeah. they've got the lifestyle already and it's it's the it's the few that are that are trying that are still pushing still working hard figuring out ways to become professional become semi-professional that have been through rejection and they're trying to still figure out where can i go what can i do I'm upset, I'm sad, I'm angry, I'm whatever, but at, at the end of the day, like I said, the end goal is always the same. So. I think, yeah, I think not every, well, yeah, every, everyone is not going to be a professional footballer, mm, you know, yeah, yeah, in, it's the 1%, yeah. so you've then got to go to the next best. Mm. How far can you go in football? Mm. So for me and you, NPL West is currently where we're at, yeah. both still 23 years old, so mm. there's a lot of time. 22. You're 22? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but we're both 22, 23 years yeah. old. Um, so there's a lot of time to progress. Exactly. To progress. Um, I think for me, I don't want to set goals, but probably mm. a goal now is conference. Mm. If I reach the conference, it would go again. We set mm. new goals, but if you could get to the conference, that would be, oh, that'd yeah. be brilliant. That would yeah, be fully unbelievable. Right. But mm. you've always got to be setting your goals, and sometimes your goals are going to have to come down. So you can't be thinking of playing for United. Now, now yeah, I'm not exactly. thinking about playing for exactly. City. It's not going to happen. Like exactly. you have to get that out of your head yeah. ASAP. Mm-hmm. So, for me, again, looking back at what I know now, as being released from a scholar, mm-hmm. I wouldn't go and look for a professional club mm-hmm. again. Someone that's training every day, I would get into men's football as early as possible because the trade. In men's football is so different mm. to playing academy football, playing 23s, yeah, development football. Type, or, yeah. It's so easy to recognise a player now that I'm in men's football that has just come out of an academy football mm. because the game is so different. You can play exactly. tick attacker, you can yeah. play a few touches and run and take people on and look really nice on the ball. But in men's football, you're going to get. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's all about it's all about the end result. Yeah, that's the thing. It's all about the end yeah. result. Doesn't matter how how good you look. Cause obviously, you get some you get some big fat guys. You get some just absolute short stuff yeah. and <laughs> engines in midfield. Yeah, exactly. Don't stop running, exactly. slide tackling. Exactly, and that's that's what it is. They'll get the results, and that's why I'm I'm actually glad you mentioned it because that's just something as well that I look at and I just think. Even though I, I would have enjoyed playing or looking back and saying, all right, let me try and stay in this academy setup. Yeah. I look at it now and like just the journey of being into men's football and getting into men's football earlier as, as I did, I just feel like, like you said, you can pick out, you can see who's just come from the academy, exactly. who hasn't. And, and it's such a good environment and a good way to progress because 
at the end of the day, when you get older, you can it's men's football all day. You're not going to yeah. play in yeah, you're not going to play twenty three. Yeah. You have to come out of an academy and play men's football first. So it's, it happens to everyone. Mm. We come out of academies, and it, it was our first training session in men's football. It was our first game in men's football. It's mm. the first time coming off the bench. Mm. That's going to happen. But if you are eighteen, or I don't know, it's not going to be sixteen. So if you're eighteen yeah. and you've come out of an academy and you go into men's football, even if for that first season you come off the bench. 10 or 15 times mm. you've got that taste of men's football the next season you might start five times and come off the bench 10 15 times mm. now you're really starting to get involved in it and now you're 20 and you've got 40 appearances in men's football that is priceless yeah. by the way yeah them appearances that are stacking up mm. are priceless as long as them appearances are pretty consistent if you're a striker you're scoring goals mm. or get an assist or at least your hold up play or your runs look nice as a defender, you've got clean sheets, you're playing well, consistently yeah, passing the ball, 1v1 one one defending, and you're showing them kind of results that you've learned from the academy, but now bring it into your game in men's football. Mm. If you're doing that on a consistent basis, you're going to get spotted and more money comes through it. Mm. You yeah. could be going into an academy club and they could be paying you mm. quite low mm. because you've never, you know, you've never been there, they don't know who you are, we'll give yeah. you. 200 quid a week yeah. but then there's a lot of money in non-league football at the minute there's a lot of we, we know we've got <laughs> field obviously yeah. Congo and around our area there coming up um oh. there's a lot of football in non-league and if you can learn your trade early you will get spot you will get spotted mm. by clubs so yeah I, again it comes kind of to what i know now just get into non-league yeah definitely. if that if that is where if you want to be playing football get into a team in non-league not saying just Drop yeah, to the lowest, off, the yeah, lowest, yeah. like count, look, counties and stuff like that. If that's where you think you are, mm. do it. But get into a club in non league as, as quickly as you possibly can after being in an academy because you have to learn that trade for the next 15 years and the trade's different to development football. Oh, 100%, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've got a little uh, inspirational quote. Do it. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna start adding this in on the end of uh, each podcast that I do. I found this one on TikTok. I read this. This one's. I actually read this. I I like this one quite a lot. All right. So it says, "Dreams without goals are just dreams, and ultimately, they fuel disappointment. So on the road to achieving your dreams, you must apply discipline, but more importantly, consistency. Because without commitment, you'll never start. But without consistency, you'll never finish. Perfect. Well, that kind of just wraps up. Everything that we've talked about yeah. for the last you know, hour oh, or so. But bro, telling you. Just consistency, commitment, 110% effort, mm. mindset, discipline, Everything. all that kind of cliche stuff. But <laughs> it's so it, true, it's though. So yeah, true. It's so, so true. true. You've got to give 110%. Yeah. Always. But anyway, um, yeah, this has been the first episode of the What's Next podcast. Uh, obviously, I've really enjoyed it with Mighty Fenton. Um, And hopefully there'll be more to come. So thanks for watching, whoever did, and I'll see you next time. Yes, G. Man, boy. That was good. That was right, no? We got got in the flow quickly as well. Yeah. Got in the flow. (laughs) Let me mum burst in. I'm like, oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs)